know, I don't want people to hear the project and go, well, I can't relate to this and it doesn't sound like anything I'm familiar with. So, you know, obviously the song has a palm muted guitar and um, yeah, sing along outro and things that I think that are familiar to Tonight Alive fans. So that was important to me to make sure that they felt secure. All right, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sounds. Now, Jenna McDougall is back with a brand new, very exciting solo project, and she is on the line right now to tell us all about it. How are you doing, Jenna? I'm brilliant. Thank you. It's giving me a real buzz to see you and hear your voice again. You too, man. It's been a Thank little you. minute, obviously. I mean, yeah. I mean, the world stopped for a second, so we'll allow that. But obviously, it's been a minute since we've had some music yeah. to talk about and what an exciting project it is to talk about. Let's get stuck right into it, haven't she? Tell me... I guess a little bit where this started. It sounds like you've kind of had at least the beginnings of some of these songs and some of these ideas for a little while now, right? That's, that is right, yeah. Um, I actually think the first Heaven She song that was written was 2018. So we were still on the Underworld tour, um, Underworld cycle as Tonight Alive. So we were only a few months into that when I wrote this song, um, Wild Wild Heart, which will come out later this year. But it, it'll be quite a shock to fans that like the same era that Temple came out, a song like like this could come out, you know, and same for No One Will Ever Love You as well and and the song that we're going to hear in a couple of days, Trying Not To Feel. So, yeah, it was a real surprise, actually, the sound that um, developed. It was an accident. Um, I don't listen, you know, I wouldn't call it country, but I don't listen to country. Um, I hardly listen to indie rock. So <laughs> it was really surprising, yeah, to hear Heaven G come out from me. Yeah. That's really interesting, actually, because I guess, yeah, yeah, from, from an outside perspective, you look at it and think like, oh, maybe those are the kind of inspirations. But was the aim more just to do, I guess, just to do something different? You know, we can clearly hear elements of what you've done in the past, but obviously a very, very different project from what you've done with the band. There was no real intention other than to to basically develop this myself. That was really the only intention was like, OK, can I do this alone? Um, yeah, do I have the skills? Can I finish a song without anybody's help? Is this something I, could, I couldn't answer these questions like four years ago? So um, that was my only goal. But previously I was trying to shape like a pretty edgy punk, like radical project that was like real angry and stuff. And it just wasn't natural. It just wasn't, it wasn't the vibe. So yeah. this, this, this is an authentic uh, representation of, yeah my inner world it's really what the most authentic part of it really is um is what i'm saying and how i'm singing because i'm not stretching my voice i don't have to warm up for an hour to reach these notes like this is me in the pocket i wrote these songs mostly in lockdown like in sweatpants so it's like i'm very comfortable in the place that heaven she comes from yeah, it has a, a bit more of an intimate feel, doesn't it? I mean, even just in the choice of instrument, instrumentation and stuff, you know, it's very stripped back, but in a really nice kind of comforting way, I suppose, is the way I kind of Thank phrase you. it. Um, let's talk, before we get into the actual music side of it, I am curious, of course, about that title, Heaven She. You know, you could have very easily just gone out there and gone, this is a Janet McDougall <laughs> solo record. You didn't decide to do that. Where did that title come from? Why did you choose that one in particular? Um, I think, yeah, I've always sort of, felt a little bit separate from my artist self. Um, you know, the lines are pretty blurred, like from who you are in your personal life to who you are as an artist. But like, I kind of wanted the separation. And I think maybe going off the road, like, yeah, reinforced that for me that it's like, they are two different lives and two different parts of me. So I like the idea of having an artist name. Um, Heaven She was something that just came out of nowhere when I was like playing with words and heavenly was something I was like, how could I, cause I like how that word sounded. So it was kind of nice to give heavenly a little bit more of a um, original feel. And also like, it, it feels like a persona. Um, maybe even like a superhero name or something like that. So yeah, yeah. Does it feel like almost playing, playing a character with these songs, I guess, in a way I, I get artists saying that sometimes where they feel like they're almost, you know, getting out on stage and it's, it's becoming something other than yourself a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely has its own soul. Uh, it feels, it feels real to me, but I think anytime you get in front of a camera or in front of an audience, something different happens to mm, your personal life. So yeah, definitely playing a bit of a character, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like I have to try. Um, yeah. yeah, it's not something I've developed in private and, and now I'm presenting to the world as like, it's not, it's not, um, 
it's not preconceived. It is just sort of a natural thing, but it, it just surprises me as well. Well, like I said, we could definitely hear how kind of natural it is on that first single that everyone will have heard at this point, which is uh, No One Let Love You. Um, you know, I mentioned the instrumentation there. That was the first thing that struck me. It's much more stripped back, but really kind of interesting. And you can still hear that, you know, I guess Tonight Alive, one of the things you'd always always associate with them is big, big, punchy sing-along choruses. This kind of has that as well, just in a bit more of a scale back, more chill yeah. vibe in there. Um, tell me a little bit about where that one came from and working on it in particular. And uh, and I guess that experience as well of being the sole songwriter and sole kind of voice here. Thank you. Yeah, I wrote this song at my flat. Um, well, we weren't quite in lockdown yet. It was 2019. So like another time hey Another a different time. different time totally i went i was just mucking around i wrote the verse and chorus and i was like oh uh this is interesting i haven't heard myself sound like this before i didn't know i could write a chorus that had so much space and um quite simple that was really really nice and i developed it over a number of months um and yeah demoed it in 2020 what was it 2020 2021 so it's, yeah, it's like it's had a bit of a life up until the point that it's actually been released. But yeah, just um, it's been it's it was really exciting. It was yeah. really exciting when I wrote the song because 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 of how much I tried to shape a different type of project and sound. This was like a breakthrough moment for me. Does so that answer your question? No, yeah. it does answer the question. No, because it certainly <laughs> feels as well like. I'm always interested when it's particularly when it's a project like this, which is a really kind of new and different step for you. Why did that feel like the one that should be the first step in terms of letting the fans know what's going on and all that stuff? You know, did it always feel like a natural, this is the launch single for this project? Yeah, it did. It did. It felt like the leader. And I think it's probably one of the least alienating songs I could have come out with first because I, I definitely didn't want to alarm people and feel you know I don't want people to hear the project and go well I can't relate to this and it doesn't sound like anything I'm familiar with so you know obviously the song has a palm muted guitar and um yeah sing along outro and things that I think that are familiar to Tonight Alive fans so that was important to me to make sure that they felt secure and that was you know anticipating what it was like to say oh I'm doing a solo project you're not going to hear a new Tonight Alive song or album for a while so yeah wanted to make sure everyone felt safe <laughs> yeah. like yeah um yeah affectionate towards the project yeah absolutely i saw you say as well you put a little making of type video and i saw you saying this this basically kind of came together after a trip to the cinema so that begs the question what film had you been seeing that meant you suddenly had to run back and write a song do you remember <laughs> Yeah, it was Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty appropriate then, isn't it? I know. I was very inspired. And have you got an IMAX? Do you guys have IMAX in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we have a few dotted around. Yeah, yeah. So it was a, it was an IMAX experience as wow. well. Like, it was emotional. And no, definitely there was something in the air for me when I left the cinema. The power of Freddy coming through you there, right there. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and then, you know, again, by the time people are seeing this, another new song will have just dropped. So this is Trying Not To Feel. Again, I'd love to hear a little bit about the writing process by that. And I guess also, how much music are you kind of playing with at this point? Is there still a load of songs ready to go? When did this, uh, this these whole kind of sessions start to come together for you? I did a sort of recording session in Feb this year. And um, I laid down four songs. So I have tens and tens and tens of demos that are waiting, yeah, waiting for their moment as well. So I'm booking studio time through August. So I'm very excited about that. But, yeah, Trying Not To Feel came together about a year ago or, le or like, even less. So it's one of the more fresh songs of the project and it, it's very much about being in lockdown. And, um, yeah, I'm, I know people in England can really relate or the UK in general I'm not sure what it was like across the UK but like yeah Melbourne in Australia was allegedly like the most intense lockdowns globally because we had like the highest restrictions on sort of like the longest periods of being in those restrictions so anyway yeah like that just was taking a pretty big toll on the mental health and yeah, this is sort of the story behind that. But it, it, it has an optimistic, uplifting, like it's almost comedic feel to it, interestingly. But it really is about being like depressed and pissed off that you're, you're not in control of your life or your freedom. So, yeah, I wrote this song, yeah, just basically like in my lounge room. But a lot of it was sort of workshopped in my backyard. And I'd walk around with the guitar on like in the sun, just kind of trying to download <laughs> lyrics. And, yeah, there's a lot of tension at the time in in the 
yeah, general community and society in the, in the country and the, and the world, obviously. Yeah, it's been really, really interesting having interviews with bands since the pandemic and everything and seeing how they've reacted to it musically because often I've seen a lot of artists have been like, I don't want to touch that at all. I want to write something completely escapist and completely away yeah. from that. Other people obviously want to process their feelings and stuff. And some people found it really kind of cathartic. Was it was it easy to channel that? I mean, there were so many emotions going on for everyone, right, in that time. Did that make it easier to kind of put it into song or was it more difficult, do you think? Oh, it was so easy for me. And I don't usually say that. Like, I'm not I'm not um, a person that can, like, turn a tap on and I can write a song. I'm not like that. I really have to have a pretty good reason. And to finish a song as well is another thing that's like, I have to have a serious story to tell. Otherwise, it's a slog for me. Um, um, but, yeah, no, I was writing a lot of music in the lockdowns because there's kind of nothing else to do. So that was, like, magic, you know. Go to online classes, go for bushwalks because I was very lucky to live a few minutes away from a nice bush reserve I could go for walks in. And I played my piano every day or my guitar, but mostly the piano because that was just flowing at the time. So just song after song was coming. So I'm That's pretty cool. lucky. Like I got to kind of go on hiatus, then go into lockdown and like, yeah, kind of exercise my creative muscles that I probably did, never really gave that much time before. No, that's really great to hear. You know, it's it's obviously amazing to have an outlet like that, particularly when it's kind of a difficult time in the, in the world in general. Um, moving forward then, so we know there's a few songs recorded already, got a load of demos. What are the kind of the aims for this? Do you see this being like a full album project? Do you see an EPs? You know, what, what are the kind of future aims for you in terms of Heaven She? <laughs> Everything, like all of those things. Great. I would love to make as much music as Tonight Alive's made, if not more, you know, I just... I've got a lot written um, as long as I can get in the studio and get it down. Like it, it, I'm ready for it. Um, I'm excited. I just want to tour. I want to perform again. I took it for granted. You know, that was my, my life. It was like breathing, you know, being on the road. So I'm just excited to do that again. And like my dreams, you know, they're not over like by any stretch. I'm, and I've said this before, but like my dreams have come true with tonight alive and I, I think I did realize that in some ways, but now having like so much separation from it, you realize like it's fragile, it's temporary, everything is. And um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to cherish heaven. She as much as possible, even down to like um, I'm, I'm posting my merch orders and doing my own PR. I'm not on a label. I don't have a manager. Um, it's nice. It feels good. This is the first time I've had so much connection with my own project. I was yeah. quite sheltered quite sheltered being in a band with a team with labels like from the age of 18 it seems it's a different game so yeah yeah taking oh. full control really it's kind of a nice nice position to be in for sure and means yeah like we say you can kind of do whatever you want and i'm sure you know you mentioned live shows there i know everyone's been desperate to get back out on stages and everything have you already been thinking about how these songs will translate say so you already been thinking about what a jenna solo show will actually kind of look like yeah yeah i have and i i was lucky i did play um a debut show on june 10 once the single had come out and it had only come out a few days earlier um which was a bit like bold of me like people bought tickets to a show they didn't know any music for you know but it was cool i got to speak a lot do a lot of storytelling um a few songs just accompanied by a pianist and then a handful of songs like full band um but yeah like I'm still a rocker, like no matter how gentle I might go in some places on this project, like I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I'll always be channeling something that people have seen from me before. And I'm probably going to miss not having a guitar in my hands as well. I already felt that instantly as I hear I'm playing an instrument. I'm like, oh, I want to muck around. So there's a time and place for both. Yeah. Yeah, you can easily bounce it out. Well, you know, as much as we say a time place for both, you know, we should mention the band because I've seen you oh. say in a couple of places that, you know, maybe not in the immediate future, but it certainly feels like we might be building once again to to kind of see Tonight Alive back in play. What's the kind of status on that situation at the minute? Yeah, it is like, it is pretty much as you've said it, it's somewhat vague, but it's like in conversation and it's it's like at least those channels of communication are open again and um we, you know, there were a lot of instances where we'd sort of set like, okay, in six months, let's come back and chat about this and um, just sort of didn't feel like the right time. And like, interestingly, the week I went into the studio to start Heaven She, like the very first day was the day that Tonight Alive got on a phone call with our manager. And with that was the day that we were like, 
I just couldn't believe the synchronicity of it. I thought, wow, something's happening. Something, you know, something is beginning in that time. It was very, yeah, exciting. It was nice. Yeah. So we'll see how we yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, it's early days for that, isn't it? But I guess, I mean, that's the kind of beauty of the the space the, the industry is in at the minute, really, isn't it? You can go off and do something yeah. like this and there's no reason why both things can't live at once and, and kind of just incorporate the same space in a way. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I am um a pretty, oh, what's the word? I have I have lots of different um sides to me, uh, like everybody does, but I really feel like... um. I'll I'll enjoy getting to embody different um, personas and artists, and that's yeah. probably a corny way to say it. I haven't just haven't really thought about an articulate way to say that, but I think it's going to be really fun doing Heaven She and Snyder Live at the same time. That's exactly really what I want to say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Why not? No, it'll be exciting to see. Well, I mean, congratulations on this project. Seriously, you know, it's it's a it's a brave move. I think you're pulling it off really, really well. I was really interested to see what's going to come next, and uh, we'll hopefully catch you in the UK for some live shows at some point. Fingers crossed, right? Absolutely. Thank you, James. Yeah, good to see. That. No, always good to see. Always good to chat to you. All right, Janet McDougall, everybody.